it was great fun, this movie. Oh, um, but I'm going to begin by asking what it was that attracted you to getting involved in Max Cloud. I just wanted to do something different. I mean, I wanted to explore the comedy um, a bit more if I could. So I had an eye on that. And then it came up out of the blue, to be honest, but they sent me the scripts and I thought, well, this is something different that I've not seen before. And it gave me, like I was thinking of films like Big, it made me think of, of something like that. Um, so yes, it was something I'd not done before and I, I wanted to get stuck in and, and give it a go. Yeah, I mean, it's quite tongue in cheek, the role. I mean, it reminded me a bit of Buzz Lightyear. You know, in Buzz Lightyear, he keeps going on about wanting to sort of report yeah. back to Star Command, and then all of the other kind of toys are going, What is this guy on about? There's a kind of set, it must have been quite fun for you because I guess you play kind of some real action heroes and roles that have got lots of adrenaline and kind of very drenched in kind of masculinity and stuff. And this felt like it was a, maybe a bit of a change of pace because it was quite self deprecating in a way. Well, but he thinks he's the man. Well, obviously. <laughs> Dick is the man. He just doesn't realise that he's a bit of a dick. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, only till later in the movie. But yeah, no, to have a lot of fun with it. And um, I must admit that I, I I probably put a bit of Ron Burgundy into the character. That, that kept cropping up, you know, as a bit of a pompous ass. But the action hero version. Um, but yeah, obviously it's a lot of fun. And I've never done anything like this before. And I said to the director, you know... Um, is new to me. I'm not sure how far is too far, and and maybe you can rein me in if I go too far. He, ne he never reined me in. He just wanted more. Go go that way more, more bigger, bigger. So I I did, you know. And uh, you got to trust the, the director. Yeah. So um, now now, you, now you've had a sort of taste for it. Is it something you'd like to maybe try more of the sort of more sort of comedic roles of this nature? I mean, of course, because it was a hell of a lot of fun to film it. I mean, I had a whale of a time. Sometimes I was thinking, well, are we, surely this can't be any good. I'm having too much of a good time. Are you sure you want to pay me for this? I feel like <laughs> I should take a pay cut or something. I loved it. Uh, so, yeah, I'd love to do it. But let's see what the response is. And um, that would uh, be what would lead me to do, to do something else like this. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest with you, it felt like a series of characters I'd quite like to see again, so I wouldn't be too adverse for a, a Max Cloud 2, but I'm sure those, again, we'll have to wait for <laughs> discussions to take place. But um, I mean, I was wondering too about the sets, because it had a, a great kind of look to it. I mean, obviously, it was supposed to kind of replicate a retro early 90s kind of video game, but how was it to be on those on those sets? Because they all looked like they were pretty much built. It didn't look like there was any kind of special effects and stuff. You're right, it was built only outside the green screen. They obviously put the planet of Hainus in there after the fact. It was actually a set that was there for a previous movie, a realistic sort of space thing, um, so I'm told. And they repurposed it, repainted it, made it look like a video game. You know, it's just a um, wooden set. Uh, it was Yorkshire in December. It was cold. Um, those fight scenes in the tunnel. The tunnel was especially cold. The rest of it was in the studio. Um, so it wasn't always easy, but uh, it looks great. I mean, the DP did an amazing job, the colors and everything. It's a very colorful film. Yeah. And how about that costume? That must have been, that looked like it was, must have been a bit of a pain to get into every morning. <laughs> it really was. Two, two uh, wardrobe ladies trying to force you into it in a, in a cold trailer on a December morning. You know, it was like, well, I won't have a second cup of coffee because I really don't need to be taking this off again. <laughs> I'll wait till lunch. Yeah. Um, I was wondering too, because I mean, Martin, I mean, he's, what, he's got another one coming out, I think, next year. So he seems to have done, he, he seems already, you can just tell from this, from Max Cloud, that he's got, there's, there's already a voice in there. You can see there's someone who knows what they're doing. Do you, I, he seems like he's sort of destined for, for big things. What was he like to collaborate with on this, on this project? He's a lot of fun. It was very, uh, you know, a lot of laughing and joking going on, as I said, like from him as well. Sometimes you, you thought, oh man, are we just making like a lad's movie? Like, is it a home video or something? What's going on? Having too much fun. But yeah, he, the environment was kept very light and, you know, you felt like you could ad lib and experiment and um, that was encouraged. And, you know, the other actors were fantastic. And yeah, there was a lot of laughter and we had a great time. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. So you, you mentioned it was shot in, in Yorkshire. So what, are you based in the States now? No, I'm in Birmingham, England. Oh, you're in Birmingham. I was going to say, yeah, because I was going to say, was it quite nice for you? Because I guess some of your films take you all over the place just to, to not have to travel too far in this instance, just, you know, a couple of hours up the road. Yes. In, in, uh, in York, 
uh, December time running into Christmas. It was it was very enjoyable. Nice quaint town to be in. Uh, fun fun actors to work with. Were you uh, were you much of a gamer back in the day? Were you do with when you were you know back in the well sort of yeah early nineties and stuff? Were you were you would you could you be found often sat in front of a telly on a console? I did a fair amount, yeah. yeah. So I went through. How old are you? I'm thirty two. Yeah, I'm forty four. So I was back in the day with the uh, Commodore sixty four, the Amiga, um, N sixty four. You know been through them all all the consoles don't play games anymore can't seem to yeah i just feel like i've got to do something more proactive yeah i get that so i get that kind of guilt if i ever sit down I, every year i think right i'm gonna buy the new fifa or something i stick it on i play it for about half an hour and then i just never play it again i always feel like i've, I've got something i should be doing other than it that's, it. that's cool growing up that's cool <laughs> having responsibilities no well, i don't like it scott <laughs> i don't like it either but no. <laughs> Um, so I was going to ask you too, because I mean, you've had some sort of brilliant projects, I mean, in, in your career, but I wanted to ask you about the Expendables. Um, what was it like when looking back now over that project to be around such a variety of kind of icons of, of cinema? How was that experience for you? And what, what did you kind of learn and take from, from those experiences being around such a, a variety of, of legends, basically? No, it was amazing. And, you know, at the time it was amazing. All these people that you've looked up to and admired as a kid and now you're working with them and not just separately in their movies but all all together in the same movie i remember the one day on the set when it was bruce willis schwarzenegger um stallone statham dolph you know randy Couture, terry cruz all of them and like van damme is with me because he's on my side and even van damme i think van damme was more nervous than me <laughs> uh it was crazy. Yeah, I'll never forget it. I felt fortunate that Stallone welcomed me into that franchise as, you know, it's almost like saying, okay, you've, you've got your stripes as, as one of the action guys now. Come and be in the action movie Big Boy franchise. And uh, it felt like a badge of honour. Yeah. yeah, it almost felt like if you get called up for the England national team, like you've been playing well for, for Villa, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, there you go. Um, because I was wondering, was there anyone that impressed you most on that set? Was there, well, Obviously, I'm sure they were all impressed, but just in terms of like how long, that the professionalism or maybe attached to their age and how long they've been doing it, was there anyone that you remember thinking, shit, that guy, he just doesn't stop? <laughs> Stallone. Yeah. Stallone is the orchestrator of the whole thing. I mean, he wasn't directing the second one. But of course, directed the first and, you know, his hand was all over it, rewriting the script and this and that, being completely in control and um, having some conversations with him at breakfast because we're all in the same hotel, most of us, about the character and luckily getting to talk to him about different films he'd, he'd worked on. But yeah, he was the ringleader and extremely smart, talented, sophisticated guy. Yeah, but you're wondering because you're working with Dolph Lundgren again soon. Is that right, or has that been done? Has that been made? The, Just you know? finished filming with him. Castle Falls, we shot it in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, and we just just finished that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, nice. So, how was it shooting under the new kind of guidelines? Was you was it quite easy to adapt to? No, very hard, very difficult. Like a massive amount of your budget is took away to put on COVID tests. And of course, that's important that we do that and keep people safe. You know, there's no way around it, but it's taken away from your budget and time. And then there were instances where like everyone's getting tested all the time. We had one instance where somebody had COVID and we had to shut down and deal with that and keep everyone safe and then resume filming. And then there were other times when people were getting false positives. And you're shutting down for no reason at that point. It's very frustrating, but, you know, it's hard. Yeah, oh, because I was going to say, I mean, this obviously this year, I mean, has been sort of, well, at the beginning of the year, at least, there was obviously a, a, there was a, a lack of, of projects. Everything kind of stalled and the whole industry shut down for a little while. But you're, you seem to be such a prolific actor, someone who kind of moves from one project to the next. Was it, how was it having a kind of little enforced break? Did you quite enjoy a bit of time off or were you just itching to get back out there? I'm some sort of workaholic, clearly. I started doing tutorials on my YouTube page and then that became this uh, action series, The Art of Action, where I was interviewing other action stars about what it is to make action movies, which became quite successful. And so, you know, I started doing that. So I'm always doing something. I did say that I was going to come out of it with a load of scripts written, but then when you're babysitting two kids, it's not as easy. 
No. <laughs> but I was wondering, uh, you know, you mentioned um, Stallone, obviously, direct, sorting out all the Expendables. Dolph Lundgren's directing the one you're working on next. So have you ever given much thought to directing? I know you've produced and stuff, but have you ever thought about sitting in a director's chair yourself one day? Yeah, absolutely. I think about it regularly. Just need the right project. And of course, I'm going to have to be in it, right? Uh, and it's like the action films that I make at this sort of uh, budget level with these schedules, very demanding. And, you know, I'm very involved behind the scenes anyway, especially when it comes to the action. There's a reason why the action is always good in my movies. I'm either working with somebody really good that take care of it for me. But sometimes I'm just having to take care of it myself. Uh, but that's that's directing. Um, but it's uh, so difficult to perform all the action. Uh, it takes a lot out of you. And to direct to the whole thing on top of that is going to be difficult. So I, I'd need it to be something where I can have a supporting role and not carry the weight of the film on my shoulders and sit back and direct. Because, you know, the first time you're doing it, you want to give yourself a fighting chance. Or give me more money and a big schedule. Like <laughs> uh, Braveheart. Yeah. <laughs> but you mentioned right. um obviously all the interviews you were doing in, in lockdown and stuff what, what did you did you because i guess the, the, the main aim for that was to give us audience members a, a kind of an insight into how it all works but were you kind of learning as well yourself from speaking to, to people and sort of were you kind of absorbing new information and education yeah absolutely mm. learned a lot doing it you know there's a lot i already knew and also just fanboying out and geeking out, like interviewing someone like Cynthia Rothrock, who I used to love as a kid and, you know, Steven Seagal and things like that. But also to talk to people like Chad Stahelski and JJ Perry and Sam Hargrave, who are, you know, huge directors in Hollywood now that were ex-stuntmen and the, the wealth of information that they have. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's action filmmaking school for everyone, but for me included. Yeah. So have you thought about moving to the States and, and get your, cause I know obviously that's but in terms of action, there's a real kind of, obviously that's the Hollywood is where it all happens. Or are you quite happy with the just being based still here and just traveling for work? Very happy where I am in Birmingham, England, yeah. where I'm from, keeping it real. Good. <laughs> just yeah. checking. Um, so my, my sort of final question really is just about looking forward to next year. Obviously, you know, someone as you've established is so busy. Have you got a sort of, How's 2021 looking for, for Scott Atkins? Yeah, it's getting booked up. Getting booked. <laughs> There's a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire. But it's difficult because of COVID and like you could be working on a movie with another one ready to go after that. Well, what happens if that one has to shut down for a couple of weeks and resume? You know, it's going to get a bit messy potentially. So we'll see how it pans out. But yeah, plenty of things uh, hopefully to be getting on with next year. Yeah, well, I think, like I said, I'm hoping, you know, with um, uh, with this one, with Matt's Cloud, you know, they, they, would you, would you, I mean, you sort of mentioned at the start you might, but if there, if there are official discussions about revisiting this character again, is it, is it a character you'd like to, to, to take on again? I would, yeah. Listen, I want to know what the, the public think, because this is something new for me and I'm, a, I'm still a bit confused about it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still trying to work out what I, what I think about myself doing this sort of thing. I'm interested to see what, what the public thinks and we'll go from there. Yeah, well, I, I just thought it was, it was great fun. And I, I think one of the biggest compliments I can pay it is I've not seen anything like it before. <laughs> and it's not often yeah. you can say that, you know, it felt like it was very original, very unique. So um, more yes. of that, the better, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what attracted me to it. So yeah, good yeah. to know. Cool, brilliant. All right, Scott. Well, thanks for, for your time, Ted. It's been a real pleasure. And best of luck with the release. And hopefully in a year's time, I'll be able to speak to you for Max Cloud too. <laughs> a bit longer than a year, but yeah. I'll yeah. talk to you for Castle Falls, Stefan. Yeah, hopefully. All right, take care, mate. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.